Hello and welcome to another story with Boo. Um, I've come today outside into the part of our garden where all the foxgloves are growing and I realised I should have waited until now to have told you the story about Lusmore. If you remember uh, the word Lusmore means foxglove in Irish. They're really beautiful and I've got loads of bees buzzing around my head as they're coming to investigate the flowers. Anyway, today's story, we're off to Africa. And the story is called The Blind Man and the Hunter. There was once a blind man and he lived in a hut with his sister at the edge of a village. And he would sit outside the hut as people would come and go. And people would often stop to talk to him and ask him questions because he always gave the best advice. And when they asked him questions, he always gave them the right answers. And they would ask him, blind man, how come you're so wise? How come you give such good advice? And the blind man would say, because I see with my ears. Now it happened that his sister fell in love with a hunter from the next village. And in time, there was a wedding and the hunter came and lived in the little hut with the blind man and his sister. Sadly, the hunter had little time for the blind man. He didn't see much purpose to a person that couldn't see. What's the point of a man with no eyes, he would say. And each day the hunter would go out with his spears and his traps and his bows and arrows. And each evening when he came back, the blind man would say to him, please, can I come with you? Can I come hunting with you? And the hunter would always say, no, of course you can't. What use is a man without any eyes? And each evening when the hunter returned from his day hunting, each evening the blind man would ask the same question, please, can I come with you hunting tomorrow? And each evening the hunter would say no. Until one day, the hunter had had a particularly good day hunting and he came home feeling very pleased with himself. And on this evening, when the blind man asked, please, can I come hunting with you tomorrow? The hunter said, okay, why not? So the next morning when he got up, he took the blind man by the hand and led him down the path out into the jungle where they were going to go hunting. They hadn't gone very far when the blind man tugged on the hunter's hand. What is it? There's a lion. There's a lion up ahead. The hunter looked. He could see nothing. Oh, come on, he said. And the blind man stopped again. No, it's okay. It's okay. The lion's eaten. He's taking a nap. We're fine. And sure enough, as they continued down the track, as they rounded the corner, there was a big lion fast asleep. The hunter and the blind man tiptoed past the lion. And once they were safely away, the hunter said, Tell me, how did you know there was a lion up ahead? And the blind man said, because I see with my ears. They carried on a little bit further. And again, the blind man tugged at the hunter's hand. Stop, stop. There's an elephant up ahead. There's an elephant up ahead. Again, the hunter looked. And again, the hunter could see nothing. It's okay, said the blind man. She's in a water hole. She's having a lovely wash. She'll take no notice of us. And indeed, as they came round the next bend in the track, 
there was a big elephant splashing water over herself. Again, the hunter turned and said, tell me, how did you know there was an elephant up ahead? And again, the blind man said, because I see with my ears. They eventually came to a clearing and the hunter told the blind man to stay where he was and that he was going to set the two traps. He would set one trap for himself and he would set the other trap for the blind man and they would come back the next day to see what they had caught. When they went back to the village, this time the blind man led the way. He didn't need anybody holding his hand. And as he walked back to the village, he didn't trip over a tree root, he didn't stumble over a rock, he didn't get tangled up in any of the undergrowth. He just smoothly and silently picked his way along the track back to the village. The following day, the hunter and the blind man went back to the glade where they had left their two traps. And when they got there, the hunter could see that in his trap was a little tiny grey bird. But in the blind man's trap, there was a magnificent bird with feathers of crimson and gold. Stay here, said the hunter. I will go and get our birds that we have caught. We're lucky, we've both caught one apiece. And as he went over and took first the grey bird and then the beautiful bird with the crimson and gold feathers, he thought to himself, what good is a man with no eyes? He'll never know which one is which. And so he went back to the blind man and into his hand he placed the small grey little bird and he kept the beautiful bird with the gold and the crimson feathers to himself. As they were walking back to the village along the track, the hunter asked the blind man, tell me, Everybody says that you're so wise, and if you can see with your ears, then tell me this. How come the world is so full of hatred and anger? And the blind man said, because the world is full of people like you. People who take what is not theirs. Immediately, the hunter felt very guilty and he took the little grey bird from the blind man's hands and in its place he put the beautiful bird with the gold and crimson feathers. I'm sorry, he said. They carried on walking a little bit further and again the hunter asked, if you're so wise and you can see with your ears, then tell me this. How come the world is so full of love and kindness? And the blind man said, because the world is full of people like you. People who learn from their mistakes. And after that, whenever a passerby stopped and spoke to the blind man and asked him how he came to be so wise, it was the hunter that put his arm around the blind man's shoulder and would say, because he sees with his ears and he hears with his heart. And that is the end of that story.